Someone asked in the comments, is anyone normal? My immediate response was, we all have issues. It's just a matter of how much your issues interfere with how you feel about yourself and how you interact with others. I'm Dr. Tracy Marks, a psychiatrist, and I make mental health education videos. There's a lot of ways I could approach this question, but I'm gonna approach it from a personality perspective. Not every emotional response is pathological. Not all fear or depressed mood is pathological. We're emotional beings who respond to our environment, and your response takes on a certain flavor that's influenced by your psychological makeup. We talk about personalities and define them based on multiple criteria, but the latest version of the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual, 5th edition, proposes another model for defining personality characteristics. It uses a dimensional approach, and it really boils down to two dimensions, self and interpersonal interactions. Self can be broken down further into identity and self-direction. Interpersonal interactions are broken down into your capacity for intimacy and empathy. Let's take a look at each of these. Self-identity is about boundaries, self-esteem, and emotion regulation. With normal boundaries, there's a clear distinction between yourself and others. You recognize your own thoughts and your own opinions. If someone disagrees with you, you may not like what they say, but it doesn't crush your spirit, and you don't feel compelled to change your opinion to please the other person. Minimal or normal problems in this area can look like waffling back and forth about something when you're under pressure, or if you're made to feel guilty, then you just cave. If you're severely or pathologically impaired in this area, you may over-identify with others. I did a video talking about this called Why You're an Emotional Sponge. Your opinions and emotions in this case are shaped by what others um, around you are thinking and feeling and not based on what you really think or feel. Normal self-esteem means generally thinking positively about yourself or you may have some moderate amount of self-criticism. Pathologically impaired self-esteem can be self-loathing or it can go in the opposite direction of self-aggrandizing. With that, everything you do is amazing, even in the face of things falling down around you because of decisions you made. You, your view of yourself is so distorted that you attribute negative consequences to someone or something else. You don't have the self-awareness to see your part in it. And that lack of insight is actually protective for you. You wouldn't be able to handle seeing yourself as a failure. So you deny it and blame it on others. The last factor in this self-identity dimension is emotion regulation. You're supposed to be able to experience a full range of emotions, both positive and negative or you may have restricted expression of certain strong emotions like anger. Anger is a normal emotion, but a strongly negative one. And some people are uncomfortable managing their anger so they suppress it. Suppressed anger can come out in the form of passive aggression, anxiety, or even depression. The second part of the self is self-direction, and this is the ability to set short and long-term goals for yourself and the ability to self-reflect. Some normal level of impairment in this area is doing things just for the approval of others or needing to please people too much. With a pathological level of impairment, you may fail to thrive because you can't establish or achieve personal goals. You may find life meaningless all the time, not just on one bad day when you've had too much to drink. This is a deep conviction and your decisions and your behavior reflect that belief. The second arm of this dimensional model of personality organization is interpersonal interactions. And this is further divided into empathy and intimacy. Empathy is your ability to understand and appreciate other people's experiences and motivations, tolerate different perspectives, and understand how your actions affect others. Another way of saying it is being able to put yourself in someone else's shoes and see their point of view, accept different ways of looking at things, and see how you come across to others. An example of normal trouble in this area is not being all that concerned about what other people think or feel, 
to the extent that your attitude feels insensitive. And this can be an attitude that pops up only under certain circumstances, or it can be most of the time, but it doesn't cause serious breaches of trust in your relationships. A more serious problem in this area may be that you can't relate at all to other viewpoints, or you find differing opinions threatening. And this does cause problems in relationships because you may be very close-minded or super sensitive um, to the things that people say. So people have to measure their words carefully with you. You may also be so clueless about how you come across and assign negative intentions to people when you don't get the response from them that you want. And this would be a paranoid stance. Then part two of this arm is intimacy. Intimacy is a measure of the depth and duration of your connections with people and desire and capacity for closeness. Normal problems in this area are things like keeping someone in an arm's distance because closeness makes you feel vulnerable. If, like most people, you've been dumped in a relationship, that may make you slow to warm up to the next person. A pathological level of problems with intimacy include having little desire for emotional closeness. You may see relationships only in terms of what they can do for you. The relationship is not a reciprocal give and take. It's mostly a take. So this is a different way to look at personality and what's normal and what's not normal. Notice I didn't list criteria and say you need a certain number to be diagnosed with a personality disorder. The idea here is that your level of functioning is on a continuum. It starts with how you function internally and then how you relate to the world. You can have trouble in certain areas and be fine in other areas. Most importantly, not all trouble is pathologic. You can take a hit to your self-esteem because of a big failure, but then you eventually rebuild your confidence. The information in this video is a building block for some other topics that I wanna talk about. For example, I mentioned that one of the measures of self-identity is having appropriate stable boundaries. One example of a negative outcome in this area is called boundary dissolution, leading to parent-child role reversal. That video is coming by popular demand, so stay tuned. In the meantime, take a look at this video on becoming an emotional sponge. See you next time.